is Louie here and welcome to the weekend um, and it's Saturday morning July 2nd and did you see it did you see that big dip well that is what I have been predicting and um, there, there's only one problem with silver dropping down into the 19s um, and I believe it got into the low 19s hopefully you had some cash ready to make some purchases uh, I saw some premiums down around two dollars um, uh, mostly on the kilo bars and the 100 ounce bars. I would like to see those premiums a little lower than that for generic. Uh, there was a smoking deal on some maples. Uh, they were uh, three something over spot. So uh, you could have picked up maples if you were looking for sovereign coins. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the dip that uh, I've been predicting. And um, uh, the thing is, um, it this was not a dip that was associated with a liquidity um, um, a spike. Okay, the dip that I am expecting is going to come when the stock market has its big sell-off. And if you think um, that we're going to bounce to higher levels here, you think the bottom is in, well, you're in the bull camp. I'm not. I'm in the bear camp. I think we're going much lower on uh, pretty much all assets. <clears throat> and when the Dow gets back under 30,000 and starts dropping 2,000 points in a day because uh, the reality of recession and, um, and the Fed tightening into it hits everyone when all of the, uh, the Fortune 500 announced missing earnings and restating their earnings, it's going to drive the market lower. Um, Okay, with that said, the problem I had uh, with this dip down to the low 19s is uh, it seemed out of place for the conditions of the market. Um, and uh, it makes me wonder if uh, we're going to rally back a little bit here. I think that's possible. But if there isn't another dip in the future, possibly to lower levels. Uh, personally, and you set your own number, um, now that we're down here below 20, um, I, I think 1850 is in play. And look at your charts, see what you think. Um, but there's nothing wrong with acting this weekend if you haven't built a stack yet. If you have a big stack and you just want to watch, that's okay too. Often I'm speaking to people that already have a large stack and you don't you don't need to buy all the way down um, you um, you know you're waiting for better opportunities um, so you could certainly say we had that on Friday uh, it was uh, you know approaching a dollar um, down um, um, and uh, you know there were some deals out there it is really really clear that the uh, that the big dealers are um, are building inventory. How do I know that? Well, I don't really know any dealers. I just know how they act. And after doing this for a decade, I just have to reiterate, people don't buy silver when it's going down. People stop buying and wait for better deals, or they get disinterested, or they sell. All right, so this, ha this is no uh, implication on the long term prospects for silver, but uh, when silver is falling, people lose interest, people sell. You've seen, you know, the SLV um, in distribution mode, um, and, and I think your dealers are going to be doing the same thing, and that, that is why that there's going to be a buildup of inventory, and there's going to be a reduction in, uh, in premiums. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's going to create opportunities for those of us that believe in the long term. Uh, having said that, I've got some uh, deals I scoped out, uh, well, actually Friday uh, after the close. I think they're all probably still out there. Um, I want to make a little statement about um, what bullion dealers to frequent. And, uh, you know, I, um, uh, as you might recall, I think I was the first channel to say boycott um, Silver Eagles. And I took a little bit of heat for that. And, you know, um, I don't have a big channel, but uh, often I'm early 
uh, in my predictions and uh, I try to tell you things that I think are going to happen and things that need to happen and then a month, two, three months later you might see other people saying the same things I've said that causes a little dissonance for the people that watch my channel especially you know the the go go stackers that uh, just only see green right i'm seeing red i see green i see all colors in between um, so I'm going to make a little statement here like I did on the Silver Eagles that now nobody is buying. And you see the premiums dropping? Okay, the distributors are, are going to be dropping those huge premiums because uh, people are not buying Eagles. Even LCSs are not even ordering Eagles. That has to do with the high premiums that they might uh, choke on. And it has to do with people not buying them anymore because they're too expensive. You'll see those premiums come way down. Okay, if, uh, if you paid the $10, $12 premiums, uh, you're probably going to be sitting on uh, you know, those losses for a while. Silver Eagles will get cheaper. It may not be until 2023 comes out. 2022 is becoming a little bit of a collectible year due to the extremely low mintage. Um, but by 2023, uh, if we don't have uh, an immediate spike up in silver prices and the need to control um, uh, control the excitement over silver, you, you may see 2023 eagles uh, come out in abundance and you may see them at older, more traditional premiums. That's my prediction. The other thing I want to say is just like when I advised that we should boycott the silver eagle, and now you're starting to see why with eagles popping up at $30, $29, um, etc. I think I've had just about enough of a mark. Okay, um, I, uh, I've made a story on it. You saw Salivate do a story recently where they completed uh, a partial acquisition of Silver Gold Bull. Now we have a number of retailers being monopolized and controlled by Amark Corporation. It's a public company. You can look up their stock. Um, but uh, we've got JM Bullion, we've got Provident, uh, we've got Pinehurst, we've got Silver Gold Bull, we've got uh, a big chunk of Sunshine Mint, okay? They control a big part of Sunshine Mint. Of course, Sunshine Mint products are unending over at uh, JM Bullion. You could buy you know, as many as you want. But somehow there's a planchet shortage that uh, conveniently gives the U.S. Mint uh, an excuse not to mint Silver Eagles uh, to demand. And that gives the, uh, the first uh, purchaser of those Eagles uh, the... Uh, um, the ability to jack up those premiums to the secondary purchasers of those metals who tack on a couple of dollars and uh, then sell them to us at unreal numbers. Um, but I've had just about enough of a mark rolling up the precious metals market and now trying to do that on an international scale. What they're going to do is they're going to institute, what I predict they're going to do, is they're going to institute their fake spot price. Okay, if you go over to JM Bullion or Provident, etc., you'll see not the real spot price per the COMEX, you'll see a fake spot price, which is 20 cents higher, something like that. But they are also going to institute permanent higher premiums um, if they can get away with it. What am I going to do? I am crossing the major retailers off my list. I am only going to purchase from um, the secondary dealers that are not part of the AMARC Borg. All right, and you'll find that these dealers uh, uh, typically display the actual spot price, you'll find their prices are lower, their premiums are lower, and they really need our help. Why do they need our help? We have to keep them in business or we will be looking at a monopoly. You know, recently uh, I've been prepping some on the, uh, the little ranch here and uh, brought out a guy to look into a rainwater harvesting uh, system. Uh, uh, water bills are going through the roof and if you have a bigger parcel, um, you're going to get stuck with very, very high rates. But um, So I was looking at a 5, 10, 20,000 gallon uh, rainwater harvesting system to bypass municipal water. 
Um, and he told me that uh, somebody has been monopolizing the rain barrel industry. And it used to be you could get a rain barrel for a couple thousand dollars, a 5,000 gallon tank. And now they're 5,000 gallons and they all come from one distributor. They all come from one company. All right, that's what AMARC is up to here. They're, they're, um, they're rolling up the industry, and they're trying to uh, make it so that you only buy precious metals from them. They can institute a fake spot price. They can institute high premiums. And if you want silver, you're going to have to pay it. Of course, the LCSs will be above the online prices because you know they have brick and mortar, and they use online as a measure of what they can charge. Um, and I want to stop it. I want to stop it. I want to see AMARC disbanded. Of course, BlackRock is one of their major investors, if you didn't know. Um, and their international expansion, I don't know who they're going after next. But I would like to focus my purchasing, if I am going to purchase, um, I'm going to focus it on the smaller retails like Monument Metals, like Bold Precious Metals, like Hero Bullion, um, from time to time, I like um, Gainesville coins. I like uh, the coin shop in Canada for collectibles mostly, not so much for bullion. But between Hero, Bold, and um, Monument Metals, and, and I've left uh, SD Bullion off this list because I think their prices are higher, you have got a secondary dealer, you've got honest uh, management, you've got um, low premiums or fairly low premiums, um, and uh, that's where I think we should be purchasing. So you consider that if you'd like to stop the march of the Amark Borg. Uh, look at these three retailers. In the spirit of that recommendation, uh, I want to look at the best price I found uh, on something at Monument Metals. Uh, $227 for a 10-ounce bar. Um, this is a Nadir bar. It's 4 9 silver and comes with assay. Uh, that's a good price on a 10-ounce bar. Uh, usually you have to buy a kilo to get a price that low. Over at Bold, uh, we saw um, incredible prices on the Germania um, kilo uh, at uh, 715. Uh, you can't quite see that. I can't make it bigger. But that says 720. The low price is 715 for a kilo. That is a smoking good deal on a very high quality bar. Um, I think Germania made too many of these, and uh, that's why you're seeing them in excess inventory. Americans uh, gravitate to kilos and 100-ounce bars last. All right, so um, keep that in mind before you buy a kilo, but I, I would buy this before um, I'd buy something with a higher premium. Uh, right around $2 seems to be uh, the, best D, the best premium on generic silver uh, at the moment. Okay, as I predicted also, uh, we've got constitutional junk going down. Uh, one price, 1967 over at Hero. Looks like you're going to get some Franklins, some Kennedys, some Washingtons. Might even get a Merck in there uh, at 1967. That is, I think, about 750 over spot. Um, I would not be buying Constitutional here. Just like the Eagles, uh, when the froth comes off the market, people start selling their stacks, and believe you me, they do. They're generally not in the people that watch the YouTube, um, YouTube um, videos. Um, but uh, people are worried about silver, and they tend to sell when it goes down. You're going to see Constitutional coming back on the market, and you're going to see that $7 premium drop quite a bit lower. Um, I believe in it. I have it. I didn't sell mine when it was bringing 27 times uh, face. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not buying Constitutional because I think it's going to get cheaper. Even if Spot doesn't drop cheaper, a lot cheaper, I think Constitutional is going to go down from here. Yes, they're not making any more of it, but it is a limited market and people buy and sell it. So uh, watch for those inventories to come up and watch for this number too. H how low could it go? Well, that depends if we have full-scale Armageddon on the price of silver and they continue to drop it down to my target of 1850 um, you could see this go to fourteen dollars I mean that is how um, volatile uh, silver premiums can be in bull and bear markets I don't think it'll get there but uh, I think you could easily knock two three dollars off this price 
um, if you want to acquire a lot of constitutional. All right, and I'm going to show you my guilty pleasure here. I really want to buy these bars. Um, you know, I think the last one of these Engelhard 100 ounce bars, even I paid 30 bucks an ounce, or maybe a little under 30. Um, here we've got over at Hero Bullion, uh, we've got a number of 100 ounce Engelhard bars, uh, both in the pressed and the poured format. I don't know which one you'll get. You probably would get the pressed one, but uh, if you do buy this, uh, ask for um, ask for the poured bar, or if you buy all three, ask for uh, one of each in the picture. Um, Man, that is sexy, sexy silver. Uh, again, 100 ounce bars are harder to move, lower premium uh, recovery when you sell it. But uh, when, the mark, when the market is humming, uh, these, these things can bring $35 an ounce. <clears throat> so those are some of the options out there if you're looking to buy. Um, there, there's quite a bit of sovereign bullion out there as well if you want those maples or you want... Um, Philharmonics, for example, um, there's plenty of that stuff out there. So, um, you know, if you want to go shopping, do go. Uh, what happens on Monday? That is the question. Well, you know, I've got another um, tinfoil hat theory. And I don't know if any of you guys watch um, the CME group, a uh, guy by the name of uh, Jeffrey Christensen, I believe. Um, and he is the head of the CME group and has been for some time. And um, he trades in silver and gold. He facilitates large clients acquiring, disposing, and, and playing futures in silver and gold. And some have speculated that he's tied into the bullion banks in such a way that he's on that side. Okay, and I can't prove that, and I'm not going to scream that from the rooftops. But, you know, it could be that this guy is the ringleader of the minions because I have uh, I watch his channel I think you want to you always want to watch what the other side is doing to gain a deeper insight and you know what when he says to his investors um, gold is overvalued it often drops when he says to his investors silver is overvalued it often drops okay you know what he said yesterday he said that this smackdown in silver was overdone. Now, uh, you could speculate with that tinfoil hat on that he is announcing to his minions of, uh, of uh, manipulators that, hey, you went too far, guys. A 91 GSR ain't going to fly in the long term. And, um, you know, there wasn't even a liquidity drain when you did it. Um, I think we had uh, rates going one way and the dollar going the other way, but it certainly wasn't a wholesale sell signal. It was just, um, you know, the dumping on silver, possibly with, um, with contracts. So um, I watched this guy, and when he says silver is oversold, that tells me that we may see a bounce in silver. Okay, just a just a speculation, but something to watch. Um, you wa you did watch it repel off the low 19s and pushing up to 20. Uh, what happens on Tuesday? Well, I don't know. Often, you know, a dollar drop in silver is followed by another dollar drop in silver. Um, I kept my powder dry, even though. Um, I really want to buy. It is so hard not to buy. It actually takes a, a lot more discipline not to buy than it does to buy, even if you're dollar cost averaging. And I'm exercising that discipline. No, I didn't buy on Friday, but it was really tempting. If you don't have any silver, then yeah, we're, we're close to a bottom here, I think. Um, and you could have bought all you want with $2 premiums and establish that stack. I, I think we've gotten the first of the big dips that I've been predicting. Um, we've got um, CME Group saying, hey, you overdid it. Um, but uh, you know, even if we rally back over $20 and try to repair that chart, uh, which is badly broken, okay, um, 
um, then, uh, you know, uh, we could have another bounce down. And it could happen when the stock market unravels. Um, and that's really what I'm waiting for. Uh, that's what happened when we got $12 silver two years ago. It was the stock market unraveling on the, on the COVID dip. Um, and, uh, I mean, there are horrible thing after horrible thing after horrible thing happening. And our leaders are making it worse rather than better. I won't even go into the, the mistakes that are being made in Washington at the moment. Uh, you've got plenty of videos to tell you that. But Wall Street um, is driven by earnings. Earnings are going down. Layoffs are increasing. The recession will probably print here in a few weeks. Um, and then you'll have the warnings and the guide downs in the big companies. I mean, I've already you know, reported on that last week, the week before. Um, you can see this stuff coming a mile away. That's why the markets are going lower. And uh, I think they're going much lower, and I think they're going to drag silver down one more time. Now, let's move over to gold. Um, gold uh, was a little surprising that it broke 1800, got down to, what, 1780 or 1790, and then recovered. Uh, actually, the miners led the metals back up which, uh, you know, the miners have been pulverated, <laughs> if that's a word. Um, and, uh, but then they led, they led gold back up, and silver to some extent, too, with the dollar retracing back down a little bit. Um, but uh, gold got a little weaker here. Um, I still think it's a good long-term hold, but in a liquidity drain, you could see gold lower as well. Um, but uh, I think I think it's still a hold. I think gold is still doing good. That's what the 91 GSR is telling you. People are buying gold over silver. I don't even know what's going on in Russia with boycotts and Russia-backed rubles and uh, sovereign governments, you know, purchasing gold. Um, gold. Gold is the stable of the precious metals, and uh, you're wise to be diversified into it to take some of this volatility volatility out out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words this morning. Uh, some of you have asked over the last month or two, you know, why I'm bearish. Well, you saw it. You saw it on Friday. That's why I'm bearish. Um, markets are in trouble. Liquidity is in trouble. Investors are in trouble. Everybody's gathered around the dinner table saying, how much did you lose in whatever asset you collect from stocks um, to, to bonds to Bitcoin to whatever it is, um, and soon to be housing, soon to be housing as well. So um, what people don't know is we're not done. We're not at the bottom. The economy is not healthy. We're not ready to make the turn. And silver um, and gold are not an inflation hedge in this environment. Not that they won't be, and they could be rapidly, and you could miss it all if you don't have any, and you're waiting for lower prices. So don't be that guy, all right? Don't be the guy that misses it all because you haven't stacked any. Um, but, um, you know, I think, I think we could have another smackdown. Could it be in gold? Yeah, it could be in gold as well. Gold, um, gold um, leads uh, silver down. Okay, you know, when it goes because of that GSR, um, I would still, uh, uh, if I wasn't, you know, busy now and headed out on vacation, um, I would still trade um, gold for silver right here. Uh, why? Because I have a significant portion of gold. I am diversified, and I would trade gold for silver right here if you could get a $2 premium. You might have to sell the gold at the LCS, and you might have to buy the, the silver online. But I would do that all day long at 91 GSR, and uh, of course a $2 uh, premium over $20 silver is a 10% uh, is a 10% premium. So you you might get 5% on your gold, and you might have to pay 10% on your generic silver. But nonetheless, I would do that trade all day long. If anybody wants to do a trade like that, I am always open to it um, because I have gold. Right. If you don't got gold, if you're 100 percent in silver because you got the lottery ticket going here, then you can't do trades like that. Um, I actually have four asset classes in metals that I've been recommending for six, seven, eight years now. And so uh, my pie chart 
Um, and I'm a little heavier in silver lately because of the GSR. But theoretically, my pie chart is 25% bullion silver, 25% gold, mostly bullion, 25% um, collectible coins, which I flip in my eBay store, and that market is dead right now, so the inventory's got to go back in a trunk and wait for better times. Take note of that if you think you're going to get into flipping, because you got to have a really long-term perspective uh, when a flip fails. And the last 25% is numismatics, which are primarily Morgans and Peace Dollars, uh, graded, um, so you don't get ripped off. Um, and that has been just okie dokie for me. I mean, you know, the collectible coins have turned nice profits over the years if you have a good eye and you sell rather than hoard. Um, the uh, numismatics have uh, rocketed upward with, it, with inflation. The, those do seem to track inflation. Um, the gold has uh, appreciated more consistently and steadily and done really well. And the silver bullion has done the worst. All right, so you ask me why I'm not 100% down on silver with all my money. Um, you know, hell no, I'm not going to do that. Look what's happening right now. I wouldn't even go 100% in on silver if we were at 1850 with a $1 premium. All right, I would buy some call options on the SLV uh, for damn sure. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm diversified and uh, it provides for, um, and also into other assets like real estate, you know, etc. So, um, you know, you just can't have all your eggs in that one basket. Don't be that guy because you will be a slave to the spot price of silver or a mark, you know, once they monopolize the world. So um, I think that's all I have to say right here. I hope it wasn't too boring of a video. I hope you're, for those of you that need silver, I hope you're shopping, um, you know, the 4th of July sales. But do not pay those high premiums. And please avoid the big dealers that are part of the AMARC Borg. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend. And I'm headed off on vacation. I will see you next week. Take care.